Now, if you follow my channel, you know I reviewed my share of detachables, two-in-ones like the Surface Pro 7 and, of course, the Surface Pro X. Now, I like that form factor. I like its versatility. I like the fact that you can use it as a tablet or you can connect a detachable keyboard. Now, a couple of years ago, I reviewed the ThinkPad X1 tablet. It was a two-in-one detachable that I really liked, especially with that legendary ThinkPad keyboard, but they discontinued that line. That is up until now. I took delivery of this. This is the ThinkPad X12 detachable two-in-one that I think is a real good challenger to the Surface Pro 7 and 7 Plus, which by the way, is geared towards businesses, as is a ThinkPad. But I think both business users and consumers will really like this. We're gonna get into it now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the ThinkPad X12 Detachable Gen 1. Coming up. The X12 Detachable is a direct competitor with the Surface Pro 7 Plus, which has moved to 11th Gen Tiger Lake processors and also is optional LTE, but it retained a lot of the same physical form factor and those thick bezels that I mentioned in my Surface Pro 7 review. So for those that didn't see my Surface Pro 7 review, link will be in the description below. Now I have a new series called Renewed Review and I will have the Surface Pro X, which I picked up for less than $600. I'll check it out in my new series, so stay tuned, that's coming soon. Now, for those that do follow my channel, you know I reviewed the X1 tablet, the X12's predecessor, and that was discontinued a couple of years ago, and that was unfortunate because I really love that two-in-one. Check out that review, I'll put the link in the description below because that was a really good two-in-one, check it out. Now, while we'll take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Lenovo. Pricing starts at $1097.40. My unit cost $1187.40. Now keep in mind, the pen and keyboard are included, something you don't get with the Surface Pro 7 or 7 Plus. And for those looking to buy one, I'll leave a link in the description below for further information and where you can buy one. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, this is typical ThinkPad packaging we've seen as of late. So you get that egg carton crate, which is a little bit more bio-friendly or eco-friendly. That's good. And as I mentioned, you get the keyboard cover. We'll get to that in just a moment. You get some documentation, which includes some warranty information and a setup guide. You also get a 65 watt power adapter. It's a USB-C power adapter and it's pretty compact. You also get the extension cord. And I love the fact that the pen is included at no additional cost. It uses one quadruple A battery. We'll get into that a little bit later. And of course you get the unit itself and holding it for the first time, it feels thin and light, really portable. Nice to see in a two-in-one of course, especially when you wanna take it on the go. Now it does have that magnesium alloy chassis, which is gonna be rugged and durable. It also has a nice black coating. And one thing that surprised me, not too many fingerprints. It has a really nice anti-fingerprint coating on it, not too many smudges, I like that. Now, taking a look at the keyboard, I'm really impressed with it. It has that legendary ThinkPad style keyboard with the track point. It also has a precision touchpad and it's working well so far. And yes, the magnetic connection to the keyboard is very secure. You won't be losing it anytime soon. That's good to see. And the kickstand allows you to have a pretty wide viewing angle going down as far as you see here. And speaking of the kickstand, very rigid and very sturdy, not too loose. We like to see that, especially over the long haul. Hopefully that will stay that way. And here it is next to the ThinkPad X1 Nano I recently reviewed. And as you can see, they have a very similar size and similar footprint. Of course, the Nano is a clamshell, whereas the X12 detachable is a two-in-one. And here it is with the Surface Pro X next to it. And as you can see, the Surface Pro X has those really thin bezels, a little bit larger display. I'm gonna revisit the Surface Pro X as I picked it up for less than $600. Find out more in that upcoming series, review renewed, coming very soon. 
And so far, very comfortable to type on, especially on that raised typing angle that you do get. You could also lay it flat, as you see here. Now, it does have a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. And I got to say, the key travel has been pretty good, and I really like the tactile feedback. This is an excellent keyboard, especially when you compare it to something like the Surface Type Cover you get with the Surface Pro 7. All right, let's check out the ports on the left side is a USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 port and above that is the SIM tray for the optional LTE. Above that is a Thunderbolt 4 port, which is good to see and a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack. Moving over to the right side is a Kensington lock port and the volume rocker up and down. And finally on the top is your power button. Notably missing no USB-A or micro SD card slot and there's a physical shutter switch to turn off the webcam. Now behind me is my studio, of course. Uh, this is a 1440p video, 30 frames per second, uh, on this ThinkPad X12 detachable. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Now this is the front-facing camera. It's an infrared camera. That means you can log in with face recognition. And this is my very messy studio, and this is a little bit behind the scenes. Uh, I'm using the rear-facing camera on the X12 detachable, and as you can see, let me just show you what a disaster this area is. Look at all these laptops. Look at the boxes just thrown around. Uh, you know, this is the life of a tech reviewer. Uh, this is where I sit for my uh, live streams and so forth. There's my green screen. There's the back of the studio, which is a total mess with boxes but I think you get the picture. So uh, this is the main console. But let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Don't mind the mess, that's gonna change. I'm gonna straighten it up, so don't worry about it. Now I'd say that the rear facing camera, which is an eight megapixel camera is pretty good. And again, it did 1080p video. So not bad for a two in one, gotta say that. All right, let's check out that display. It's actually pretty gorgeous. It has a full HD plus resolution of 1920 by 1280. That means that it is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It is a lower resolution display than the Surface Pro 7 and 7 Plus, but it really has thinner bezels and it is a very bright, sharp display in its own right. Now it does get bright at 390 nits, has really good black points, good white points, excellent contrast, and it has a low Delta E score of 1.68, making this a color accurate display. It also covers the color or gamut really well. You're looking at 92% sRGB, 69% Adobe RGB, 68% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 63% NTSC, making this a very good choice for content creators to do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. All right, let's talk about the pen, which is included at no additional cost, something that's not the case with the Surface Pro 7 or 7 Plus, where you have to pay extra for the keyboard and the pen. That's not the case here. You get both included at no additional cost, which I really like. Now, it uses the Wacom AES technology, has good pressure sensitivity, great for taking notes, great for sketching out artwork, no complaints on that front, working really well. Now, the pen doesn't stick magnetically to the side like you can on the Surface Pro devices, but there is a loop on the keyboard that allows you to keep it stored on the device. So there is a solution there. Not the best solution, I don't think, but definitely there for convenience. And an area where it really shines over the Surface Pro 7 is battery life. And that's thanks to that 42 watt hour battery, which is a pretty good size for a two in one detachable. It did 11 hours and 12 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi Fi at 115 nits. That was really good in terms of all day battery life. That's something we like to see. And the 65 watt USB C power adapter included charges in about an hour and a half, and that's really fast. Now, as far as performance is concerned, this is running the Core i5 1130G7. That's the lower powered Tiger Lake processor and pretty decent performance considering how small and light this two-in-one detachable is. Not too bad, actually, in terms of the numbers, as you can see here. Don't expect it to be a major powerhouse. That's not what this is designed to be, but definitely respectable performance for a thin and light two-in-one. Now, my unit has 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM, but you can get it with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is non-upgradable, meaning it's soldered into the motherboard. And my unit has a 256 gigabyte SSD drive, and here's how it did on the reads and writes on the Crystal Disk Mark test. Now, there are two front-facing speakers. I would say they're above average, not too bad. Pretty loud, filling up a room rather nicely, even with a hint of bass. I would say they did a pretty good job. If you want an even more enhanced experience, use a pair of good Bluetooth headphones or wired headphones for that matter. 
Okay, let's wrap it all up. What do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad X12 detachable? I absolutely love it. I think it's an excellent competitor to the Surface Pro 7, 7 Plus, and of course, even the Surface Pro X, which I will revisit very shortly. Stay tuned for that new series. Now, as far as the display, Full HD Plus resolution, 16 to 10 aspect ratio. I love the included excellent keyboard we get from the ThinkPad line here. It really works well. I like it better than the type cover you get with the Surface Pro 7, which you have to pay for separately by the way premium build sturdy hinge all day battery life really good performance considering it is a low powered tiger lake processor it worked really well and i like the fact that the pen is also included at no additional cost there are a few negatives no micro sd card slot no usb a port but really not deal breakers in my book or for most people i don't think but this is really an excellent competitor especially if you're in the market for a surface pro 7 or 7 plus i think business users and consumers alike will both love this offering I really liked it a lot. I'm gonna give this my editor's choice for the two-in-one detachable category here for early 2021, making the X12 detachable. Definitely worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the X12 detachable? I really like it. It's got that ThinkPad quality. Now it does show some fingerprints, but a lot better than other ThinkPads with this black coating on it. It's got the magnesium alloy chassis. Now I love the fact that the pen and the keyboard are included. I like the battery life on this. You can pretty much count on all day battery life. I really like the camera on this. It's got an eight megapixel rear facing camera and a front facing camera with five megapixels. You can get 1440p at that front facing camera. And that's going to be great for Zoom and Skype when we're working from home. The rear facing camera can do 1080p video and it wasn't bad as you saw from the video. And the performance has actually been pretty good with that Core i5 1130G7. That's the lower powered Tiger Lake processor. So you're getting good battery life, but you're not sacrificing too much performance. It was actually pretty good for something this thin and light. Now it's a really good display, full HD plus resolution, 12.3 inches. 1920 by 1280. That is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And it's not a three to two aspect ratio like you get on the surface line. 16 to 10 is a nice blend between getting productivity work done and of course, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube, all working well on this device. Now it's a bright display, covers the color gamut really well, and it is color accurate, so you can't ask for more. But it's not quite as high of resolution as a Surface Pro 7 or 7 Plus, so just keep that in mind, but it's good nonetheless. But I'm curious to know what you think, let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.